Hello and welcome everyone to the Drishti IAS English YouTube channel. My name is Pragya and in today's episode of Polity Primer, we are going to discuss a very interesting topic which you might have heard in the news but you must not be aware about. The title of our today's discussion is the Model Code of Conduct or famously known as the Achar Sanhita in Hindi. In this uh, discussion, we will be studying about what is the Model Code of Conduct. We are also going to see its evolution in India. We are also going to see some of the important model code of conducts for the political parties as well as the candidates. We are also going to ponder upon the question that are model code of conducts legally enforceable in India. We are also going to see some of the criticism of the model code of conduct and in the end we are going to see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, there are five pole bound states that are going in polls. And the model code of conduct is already in force in those states. So, this brings us to the question that what are these model code of conduct? So, if I talk about these model code of conduct in very simple language, they are a set of guidelines that is issued by the Election Commission of India. A simple set of do's and don'ts. It is a consensus document which asks the party to and their candidates to behave during the elections. And what is its aim? It, it is aimed to uh, conduct free and fair elections in India. It helps election commission in keeping with the mandate it has been given under article 324 of our Indian constitution which talks about the superintendence and control of elections which is given to the election commission of India of the uh, which gives it the power to supervise and conduct free and fair elections to the parliament and state legislatures. So, as we all know, Election Commission is the main um, body which is, which is empowered or tasked with the conduction of free and fair elections in India. And to conduct these free and fair elections, there has to be a model code of conduct. You have to stop the corrupt practices that are happening in the elections and that is why the Election Commission releases these set of guidelines or a simple list of do's and don'ts uh, when the uh, elections are going to take place. So, if you ask me that, uh, ma'am, what is the timeline of model code of conduct? By when does it get enforced by the Election Commission of India? So, there was a controversy between the Parliament and the Election Commission of India. The Parliament wanted the model code of conduct to kick in when uh, the Election Commission has announced the schedule for the elections. But what happens today is the model code of conduct comes into force as soon as the election schedule is made public by the election commission of India. Election schedule. So, as soon as the dates are announced of the elections, the model code of conduct come into force. The philosophy behind the model code of conduct is the parties and candidates should show respect for their opponents, criticize their policies and programs constructively and not resource, resort to mud slinging and personal attacks but sadly this does not happen in India. Parties resort to personal comments. They criticize not only, or not only the programs and policies of the opposition but of their previous leaders as well and they often resort to personal attacks against their opponents. So, although the model code of conduct is aimed to reduce all of this, it is a set of guidelines that is aimed to reduce the corrupt practices in the election. In fact, it is a consensus document which the parties themselves have agreed upon. But still, it is not followed strictly in India. The MCC or the model code of conduct is intended to help the poll campaign maintain high standards of public morality and provide a level playing field for all parties and candidates. So, see elections are going to take place, right? So, you will provide the election commission intends to provide a level playing field for all of the candidates that are taking part, part in the elections. So, as there is a choice of candidates between the voters, they are able to exercise their right to vote in a free and fair manner and that is why these model code of conducts become so important. Now, let us see the evolution of these model code of conducts. So, what happened in 1960, the state legislative assembly for the Kerala took place and in that state legislative assembly or before the conduction of that state legislative uh, assembly election, what happened was a simple 
रूल और अ सिंपल सेट ऑफ गाइडलाइंस फॉर मेंटेनिंग एन एथिकल कंडक्ट वाज रिलीज सो दिस वाज द फर्स्ट इंस्टेंस ऑफ हैविंग अ सिंपल सेट ऑफ गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रैक्टिसिंग ड्यूरिंग द इलेक्शन देन इन नाइनटीन बिफोर नाइनटीन इट वॉज एक्सपेरिमेंटेड फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन अ नेशनल लेवल फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन नेशनल लेवल नेशनल लेवल बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया सो आफ्टर अ सक्सेसफुल रन इन द केरला स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली इलेक्शन फॉर द इन द नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू ईयर इट वॉज वेरी फर्स्ट टाइम इट वॉज एक्सपेरिमेंटेड ऑन अ नेशनल स्टेट इन द लोकसभा इलेक्शन बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया and it had a successful run in 1962 as एंड इट हैड अक्सेसफुल रन इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू एज वेल देन ऑल पार्टी रेटिफाइड दीज मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट ऑल पार्टी रेटिफाइड द मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट सो इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी नाइन वॉट हैपन वॉज मोर रिस्ट्रिक्श ऑन द पार्टी इन पार वर प्लेस्ड बाय द मोर रिस्ट्रिक्श ऑन द party in par So in 1979 the election commission decided that to prevent the corrupt practices by the party in par more restrictions had to be done on their conduct during the election so as they are so as they are not able to you know violate the uh, official position or violate their strength in the elections and Uh, that is why more restrictions were placed in 1979 on the ruling party then in the year 2013 restrictions were placed on elections manifesto election manifesto by the political party so the election commission or the supreme court in her judgment in 2013 said that you cannot promise anything in your election manifesto which is against our constitution which is violating the fundamental principles or of our constitution you cannot make false promises to lure the voters election manifesto has to be a genuine document you have to write only those things which are possible for you to achieve you are not going to lure the voters by making false promises but sadly this does not happen most of the political parties promise huge things if they come in power for the uh, their voters and the election manifesto is often overhyped by the political parties now let us discuss the model code of conduct for political parties and their candidates so these are some of the important model code of conduct which we are going to discuss so the first is no political party or candidate can secure votes on the basis of caste and religion but sadly this is also a dead letter every political party in india tries to secure votes on the basis of caste and religion in fact you cannot even use the temples or other such religious institution for your election campaigns the political parties and their candidates should confine their criticism of rivals of the policies program past record and work but this also as i have explained to you before this does not happen the um, political parties or the uh, star campaigners in elections often resort to the personal comments against their opponents they not only criticize the current regime they criticize the re previous regime of the political party as well so they often resort to all of these mal practices then the election commission has made it clear that all parties and candidates should avoid corrupt practices like bribing voters intimidation of voters impersonation of voters etc but on the other hand this is also not followed bribery is very common promising of freebies is very common luring the voters with uh, alcohol luring the vo uh, voters with free promise of gold luring the voters uh, for uh, with false for promises that if uh, we come to power will construct your house will give a government job to your son or daughter so all of these practices is very common uh, amongst the political parties in india then there are some other model code of conducts as well the parties must inform the local police authorities of the venue and time of any meeting in time to enable the police to make adequate security arrangements but sadly this is also not followed 
you see whenever there is an election rally of a political party and supposedly their star election campaigner is coming to uh, you know give a speech at that rally we have often heard in news that there are security lapses sometimes there are often instances of stampede as well the crowd is almost uncontrollable in those rallies and the police is not able to make arrangements in due time for conducting such a big election rally then only voters and those with valid pass from the election commission are allowed to enter the polling booths the ruling party at the center of states should ensure that it does not engage in practices to indicate using official position for the purposes of election campaigns but what happens is they often intend to use their official uh, position for influencing the elections apart from these carrying or burning effigies of your uh, opponent is also banned by the election commission but sadly most of these model code of conducts are just dead letters they are completely violated they uh, although the election commission has flying squads you know which prevent the violation of these model code of conducts but still the violation of these model con code of conducts is very rampant during the election times and the election commission is not able to prevent these violations so we live in a digital age right and after the advent of social media social media has almost blurred the line between private and public content what happens is as soon as the elections are uh, announced the content related to the elections becomes viral on the social media with many uh, influencers many people talking about the elections then you have specific dedicated it cells of the political parties who also use social media to uh, change the outcome of the election or to influence the election so the use of social media is one of the biggest challenges in the enforcement of the model code of conduct now with this we come to another moot question of our today's discussion that are model code of conducts legally enforceable so the answer is no although they are very important set of guidelines that are issued by the election commission of india but they do not have any legislative backing on them it is not a legally enforceable document and the commission usually uses moral sanction to get political parties and candidate to fall in line so what happens is the election commission resorts to ipc uh, fire filing of fir's issuing sanctions you know barring the star election campaigners to uh, conduct any further election campaigns so these are all of the moral sanctions that are placed by the election commission of india but if you ask me ma'am are they legally enforceable is there a legislative backing on them the answer is no it is not happened governments have in the past attempted to amend the representation of the people act 1951 to make some violations of the model code of conduct illegal and punishable but this is uh, not in uh, place these recommendations were not followed if you ask me ma'am why are they not followed because the election commission of india is against making them legal it argues that election is a 45 day process and the supreme court cases or the court cases go for a very long period of time so what can be the way forward in this regard we need to have fast track courts which can uh, you know ensure that there is no violation of the model code of conducts now let us understand the criticism of this model code of conduct so the very first criticism is lack of statutory powers of the election commission to act against non observance so this is what i was explaining to you before also that election commission should be an independent body it should not be you know dependent on the political parties for anything it should be completely free from any political bias so as to conduct free and fair elections in a biggest democracy like india but what happens is in these cases in the violation of model code of conducts ec is not very powerful they can uh, resort only to sanctions they can resort only to filing of firs against the violators but they do not have a, a regime or a solution in place to tackle these violations especially in the case of social media then there is lack of legal enforcement increases uh, non compliance definitely if something is just a set of guidelines if something does not have a legal deterrence definitely it is bound to be violated why because you do not have a deterring factor you do not have a legislative backing 
you know if you will violate also you, the maximum punishment you can get it you will be banned from conducting any further election campaign okay until and unless your political party is winning until and unless you are you know winning the constituency seat for which you are contesting no one is bothered about and no one is feeling deterrent about violating these model code of conducts then regulating fake news and hate speeches at election rallies so this is another you know disadvantage of the social media era fake news and hate speeches uh, this is very difficult for the election commission to control uh, indirectly or directly political parties or their workers they what they do they make anonymous accounts on the social media and they start uh, you know increasing those speeches or increasing enmity be be between two different religious groups or uh, it often leads to riots as well but uh, curbing the fake news and hate speeches at election rallies hate speeches at election rallies is very common if you have observed in the news most of the prominent leaders also indulge in uh, giving hate speeches in their election rallies so this is also a big challenge for the election commission of india especially after the social media era election commission lacks the resources and surveillance capabilities to enforce and penalize mcc violations on social media so this is what i was uh, talking to you about election commission does have a flying squad it does have observers but it does not have a technical dedicated technical team to observe the violation of model code of conduct on social media they do not have the technical know how they are short staffed they have a lack of resources so that is why on social media there is a rampant violation of these model code of conducts so if you ask me ma'am what is the way forward how can we stop the violations of the model code of conducts so first of all you need to give it a legislative backing second you need to make the election commission as an independent body like it happens in the other countries around the world india should make election commission completely independent election commission should be free from any political bias and it should not be dependent on the ruling political party then what can be done is you need to have dedicated team cells to uh, watch the violation of model code of conduct on social media so if you ask me what you can do as a citizen there is this app known as the c vigil what happens is anyone uh, of us who has smartphones you can directly go to this app c vigil and you can uh, inform the election commission of india their flying squads about the real time violation of the model code of conduct you can send them pictures videos if you, if you see that alcohol is being distributed if you hear that the election uh, the con candidates are coming to the houses and promising freebies the candidates are coming to the houses and promising that we'll construct your house or we'll conduct a or we will give you a government job if you are elected to a family members what you should do is you should immediately report such incidences on the c vigil app that has been developed by the election commission of india and that is this app is a very important tool in the hands of the common citizens because it allows real time monitoring of the violation of the model code of conducts and you can uh, you know send them pictures videos through this app so definitely all of my students who are the, in these poll bound states should definitely make an effort to report any violation of the model code of conduct through the c vigil app with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have understood the important model, model code of conducts we have also seen its history we have also seen its evolution we have also understood some of the important model code of conducts and we have also seen that how you can use c vigil app to you know report these violations of the model code of conducts as a common citizen so uh, my conclusion would be election is in india is uh, should be free transparent and peaceful and these model code of conducts even if they do not have a legislative backing they are very important for conducting a free peaceful and a transparent elections in india now let us understand a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is consider the following statements and this is a pyq which was asked in the year 2017 your statement number 1 is the election commission of india is a five member body your statement number 2 is union ministry of home affairs decides the election schedule for the conduct of both general elections and by elections your statement number 3 is the election commission resolves the disputes relating to splits and mergers of recognized political parties kind your options are 
ऑप्शन ए इज वन ओनली ऑप्शन बी इज टू एंड थ्री ओनली ऑप्शन सी इज थ्री ओनली एंड ऑप्शन डी इज वन टू एंड थ्री काइंडली लेट मी नो द करेक्ट आंसर इन दी कॉमेंट बॉक्स बिलो ना लेट अस एनालाइज अ प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन फॉर योर मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन तो योर क्वेश्चन इज डिस्कस द रोल ऑफ इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया इन द लाइट ऑफ द इवोल्यूशन ऑफ द मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो पी वाई क्यू आज इन योर एग्जाम एज रिसेंट एज इन दर टू So you will firstly write what are these model code of conduct. So you will also write the role of ECI in in enforcement of model code of conduct. Then you will also write that the model code of conducts are often violated blatantly during the elections, and definitely they should be made legally enforceable. We should have fast track courts for pursuing the violations of these model code of conducts. The election commission needs to be better equipped to handle the violations on the social media, and you can conclude holistically that. even though the election commission is working very hard to prevent the violation of the uh, model code of conducts and you will also mention the civil vigil app that can be used to report these violences but still we need to make election commission as an independent body and definitely model code of conducts violation should have a legal deterrent so you can have a holistic conclusion of this question in your main answer i hope this session was insightful for you If you found the today's discussion to be helpful kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates thank you